Hello, welcome to Classical Mythology, Summer 2020. I'm in, your instructor, Mr. Bernard Norcott Mahaney. Uh, I've been teaching classical mythology for some 20 years or so. Uh, and prior to that, I taught Latin and Greek. So I have some long-term background in classical mythology and things ancient. Um, you know, I'm glad to have you in the class. Um, the because of the nature of the class, which is condensed to about six and a half weeks, so it's ordinarily a 16-week class. The summer version is eight weeks, but now this is further compressed. Because of that, um, I, what I've done is I've opened the, up the class early so that you can get started on work if you are so minded. If not, that first week is really going to be a doozy. So just want to give you a heads up. If you wait till the 15th to start, you will have a ton of stuff to do in that first week. That said, um, I urge you to read through the email that this, uh, the link to this video was on, uh, first of all. Um, familiarize yourself with that. I would urge you to sign into the class and check out the syllabus to see what's required. Make sure that you get the book Classical Mythology in Context. It has to have all four words by Lisa Maurizio. Any other classical mythology book will not work. Now, the I think you can get some through the bookstore, although how that works under these quarantine sort of conditions, I'm not sure. But you can also go to, uh, there's a website called Redshelf, R-E-D-S-H-E-L-F dot com, Redshelf dot com, which is an e-book uh, vendor, uh, where, and you can purchase the book there, although I would just rent it. Uh, I think you can rent it for something like two months, which would be all you need, uh, for very little. I mean, I'm eight dollars ten dollars something like that so it's 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 quite reasonable um, that ebook has all the stuff that the book has um, in addition because it's an ebook it's a lot easier if you're trying to find stuff um, with an ebook you know you can do word searches and so forth to find things so that's helpful um, we're going to get started right away in the book um, and it may take you, you may not be able to get the book until, uh, if, if you don't go with Red Shelf, if you order it, uh, you can get a, a hard copy of the book uh, rented through Amazon or any other of the vendors where you can rent uh, actual paper books. Um, and that's fine too. Again, I would urge you to rent the book rather than buy it. Um, I like the book because it provides both um, the material, the actual ancient texts, but it also provides uh, scholarship, some actual snippets of scholarship, which I think is important because when we talk about myth, we're supposed to understand how it is that we try to interpret myth, and this is the only textbook that actually provides you with chunks of scholarship. Uh, the others are heavier on the literature part, which is great, but really skimpy on the scholarship part. Um, so, um, Lisa Murcio, Classical Mythology in Context, that's the textbook. Either get it through some sort of uh, vendor uh, if you want the book, or Red Shelf if you just want the ebook, uh, that would be fine. I think you can even go to the Oxford University Press site and get the ebook through them as well, but I don't know how what, what the deal is there. Uh, I've actually, you know, rented the uh, ebook from because uh, I wanted to see what the ebook looked like from Red Shelf, and it was it was very easy to get, uh, and, and I had it for you know eight weeks or something like that. Um, if you are having trouble getting the book, or you're not going to be able to get the book till later in the month. We will have a test. We will have other stuff coming up. Here's what I urge you to do. There are videos that I've done of lectures based on the PowerPoints that Maurizio her herself put together to go along with the book. So I basically have done lectures on the book. So in lieu of having the book, what I would urge you to do is look at those lectures so chapters one, two, and three, those are the ones that are going to be on the first test. Look at those. 
uh, take notes, uh, get a sense of what's going on. Um, you can use that information to help you post uh, on uh, the discussion boards because there are weekly discussion boards where you discuss what you're reading or what you're hearing. Um, I've got suggested questions. You don't have to answer those questions. You can simply react on your own to what, uh, what you encounter. Um, but one way to, to get that stuff done without the book would be to look at those lectures. And there are links uh, on, the, on the, the sheet that, I'm, that, that goes along with the, uh, the message I'm sending you. Um, there's there's a, a box that has a link to every single chapter's um, uh, lectures. So I, I would urge you to do that. Third, if you don't have the book to start off, the first work that we're going to look at is Hesiod's Theogony. So Hesiod is an author composing uh, his poetry sometime between 750 and 700 BCE. That seems to be his time frame. We don't know anything really about him, but that seems to be when those works were be, the works that are associated with Hesiod were composed. So the Theogony is sometime in that time frame. It tells the story of creation and of the, uh, the situation that leads up to Zeus ruling um, the world. So, read, you, if, you know, if you can't get the book, where are you going to find that? Well, if you go to um, the Canvas site for the class, uh, you'll, when you open it up, there'll be different modules. If you look at the module for chapter two, there is actually a thing that says Theogony with notes. Um, you can click on that. What I did was I found uh, online a text of the Theogony. I simply imported it into a Word do document and then I annotated it myself with notes, uh, which may make it easier to read. If you, so in other words, you can still read the Theogony even if you don't have the book. Uh, and that is the most important thing in chapter two. Um, also, I think I have Genesis, the section from Genesis, it's also in the book. I think I have that with notes. Uh, or you could look at Genesis yourself if you happen to have a Bible. Um, but the opening couple of chapters of Genesis, that also, th those are the two most important things in chapter two. So getting those things uh, uh, under your belt even before you have a book is certainly possible. Um, the final thing that I just want to say is, um, you know, get started, do your class introductions that's uh, available to you now. Uh, it's not due until the 19th uh, because technically the class doesn't start till the 15th, but you can get it done early. Um, get that done, get that out of the way, introduce yourself, uh, wait a few days, go back and then respond to a, to a fellow student uh, or two, welcoming them to class, commenting on something that they've said. This will give you some practice in using the discussion boards if you don't already have some experience there. Read the syllabus and take the orientation quiz, which is basically a quiz about the syllabus. So those two things, get those done as soon as you can. Um, I would urge you to try to get them done this week, uh, you know, try to get it done by Friday. Uh, they're not due until next Friday, a week from Friday, but getting them done early means you can then focus on chapter two and chapter three, which you're going to need for the test, which will be coming up only about a week and a half later. So things are going to move fairly quickly, so you want to get started. When you read uh, chapter one and two, well, when you read chapter two, just look at the, the lecture for chapter one. But uh, when you read chapter two, uh, you know, take down notes, any you know, key words or key terms or key characters, jot those down and see if you can remember who they are. That, that would be my advice as to how best to approach the material. But comment, you know, read for about an hour. And then after you've read for about an hour, write some, some discussion posts. Write one, write two, write three if you want, and get those down because there will be enough material, even with only an hour's reading, for you to start discussing. And the point with the discussion boards is to get yourself on the board to get your points. Um, I mean, I want you to learn the material, but from a point perspective, the thing is to get on the board early. Now, 
as an incentive to get the discussion boards done early, I am giving um, extra credit points if, the, if you get your personal po posts done early. Um, so like two days before they're due, if you've got them posted, I will give you um, some extra credit points. Uh, this will be an incentive to you, but it also means that people will post and then it makes it easier for other people to respond. I mean, if 10 people post, then there's plenty of stuff to people to, to respond to. If only one person posts, then it's very difficult because who, who are they going to respond to if they're the only ones uh, posting? So it's an incentive, um, but I, that I would urge you to try to get Chapter 2 under your belt uh, soon uh, as well. That way, next week, you're only doing Chapter 3 and a little bit of 4, and then getting ready for the test, the first test, and that's going to be a lot easier to do um, rather than have to do it all next week. Um, but that's, that is up to you. Um, I will be giving additional uh, video information, video notes um, on things like the art discussion later on. Um, so uh, I've already got them on YouTube. I'll send the link to them and you can, you can see them and look at them and that will help you do the art discussions. But you don't need to worry about that really till we're into next week. All right, so again, welcome to the class. Uh, I'm your instructor. I think the material is worth studying. I think a lot of it is fun to study, to, to read. Uh, there are parts of Hesia that are a hoot. Um, and, um, you know, one of the purposes of myth of story is to entertain. And so Hesia was trying to entertain his audience. And you can see points where he's clearly going for some sort of visceral reaction from his audience. Um, you know, when you see the section on the castration of Uranus, I think you'll see really how he's really trying to play on the emotions of the audience, uh, which is, of course, what you're doing if you're telling a story, right? You, you don't want to tell a story as a totally flat, um, you know, bland thing. You want to do something to engage the audience's uh, interest. So um, I hope you'll find this stuff interesting. Um, I think the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. Uh, you can contact me. Best way is through uh, Canvas email uh, because for, for two reasons. One is you've got a record that you actually did try to communicate with me and um, usually if you've written it out uh, it's a lot easier for me to respond and then you have a record of my response. So which is a you know, sometimes you need to look back on my response to see what I said, and you can't do that if it's a if it's a you know over the phone thing. Uh, but a written thing, you you have a way to, to refer back to it. So, again, looking forward to to talking with you all. Um, you know, in the discussion boards. Um, and again, I am Bernard Norgat Mahaney, your instructor for classical mythology, summer 2020.